Today on Simple Food, Simple Life, I'm going to show you how to make a family-friendly goulash just using these simple ingredients. Now, don't go away, because you don't want to miss it. Thanks for sticking with me. Now then, I want to show you what I've got here. I've got some chopped cel or excuse me, chopped celery, chopped green pepper, and I have a whole onion. This is a whole pepper and two large stalks of celery. And you notice I chopped them all small because remember this is family friendly. That usually means it's kid friendly. So the, the finer you chop your vegetables, the better. Okay. Now then, I'm going to turn my uh, burner on here and I've got my kettle. And I'm going to put in my uh, hamburger. Let's wash my hands real quick here. Mm -hmm. And... I'm going to brown this up. Now, if you notice, I am not using any garlic. Um, I'm not using anything exotic in this goulash. This is a family-friendly goulash. And so, I'm not going to go crazy with stuff. And besides that, we want this to be very, very economical. We don't want anything um, costly or exotic, right? Because we are just doing this for a family and we're thinking of uh, younger people too, okay? And then you know what? There are people that are kind of um, picky. So we're going to put this in and, <coughs> and we're going to cook our meat and our vegetables together. Alright, and I have already cooked um, a four cups, four cups of dried pasta. I cooked it according, excuse me, I need a drink. <laughs> Isn't that funny how you get um, horse? at the weirdest times. All right. Oh, that's better. All right. Now, you notice the heat's gone down a little bit because I put those cool vegetables in there. But you know what? I can still smush up my hamburger. That's a technical term. I can smush up my hamburger while I am cooking my vegetables. And to bring out the flavor, I'm going to add some salt. That's pretty important because salt makes food taste good. You know it does, so don't go getting all crazy about salt. Okay, and I put some pepper in there too. Now, I'm not putting any hot peppers. I'm not putting any garlic. not putting any um, hot uh, or chili powder. I'm not putting any paprika. Uh, you can, once you learn the basics of this, you can doctor it up any way you prefer. I'm just showing you how to make a very um, family-friendly goulash. This is the goulash that I have made for my family for years. <clears throat> they still like it that way, uh, even though they're all grown up, and I still make it this way. My husband always loved my goulash. Now look at that. See, it's getting there, getting there, getting there. I'm going to let that um, brown up a little bit more and let those juices come out. And I want my vegetables to get soft but not um, mushy. Okay? All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, oh, and just so you know, I, I had less than a pound of hamburger. I had about three quarters of a pound. Um, and my hamburger was $1.99 a pound. Okay? All right. Just so you know that. And uh, <clears throat> so, they're cooking up really nice. Now, I've got two cans of tomatoes. These are just plain old regular diced tomatoes. There's nothing exotic. They're not stewed. They're just diced. There's nothing exotic in here. Okay? I just want... <clears throat> to demonstrate to you how very, very simple this goulash is. 
another drink of water for the cook. <laughs> now, I put the, the um, uh, tomatoes in, and you know that they're, the heat's going to go down. So that's fine. No problem. There we go. Now that I'm going to bring that heat back up, I'm going to let these cook down, and then we're going to get to the next step. Now, I've already cooked my macaroni. I think I told you that. So I have not rinsed my macaroni. My macaroni is hot. When I have a hot dish, I don't mac, uh, rinse the macaroni. So when this comes up to heat and really gets to cooking more, we will be back, and I'm going to show you what that should look like. So don't go away. And while you're waiting, subscribe, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. All right. Now, this is cooked down some, but I want to show you what I did here. This is a little trick. Because those tomatoes are kind of chunky, I want to break them down. But I don't want this to cook for ages, right? So I've just got my potato masher here. And I'm breaking up the tomatoes. <clears throat> and I'm breaking up the hamburger at the same time. And I'm breaking down those other, the vegetables, the celery, the peppers, and the onion. <clears throat> and I still have this on high. Because I'm cooking away here. Now then, I want you to see, see how that's broken down now? It's good, perfect, great. And I'm going to add a little bit more salt because we like to layer the salt and pepper, right? Put some on there. And don't be afraid to use the salt, but you know what? Just use it to taste however you like. Okay, now. Now that this is cooking, look good? <laughs> I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to grab my macaroni. And... I did cook four cups of dry macaroni, and this is what it looks like after it's cooked. So uh, that kind of doubles in bulk, um, just so you know. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see that this is still kind of warm. That's all right. I'm going to put this in the kettle. And I'm going to mix it up. I may or may not use all this. If I don't, just so you know, cooked pasta freezes very well. You can put this in a freezer bag, lay it flat, what is remaining, and um, take it out, thaw it, and use it for other dishes. Okay? All right. I think that's all I'm going to use. I've used about half of that. <clears throat> I'm going to mix this up here, get it all smooshed, smooshed in my, in with all the burger and the seasonings and everything. And now, here's the secret to this dish. It is tomato juice. I'm not using tomato sauce. I'm not using expensive uh, paste, tomato paste, anything. I don't need that. I've got this. I've got a whole can of tomato juice. Now, all I do, I just simply put enough tomato juice in this so that it does not, um, it'll look a little soupy. See how it looks a little bit soupy? I'm going to put a little bit of tomato juice in there. And what's going to happen, I've got my heat turned down on medium-low, and I'm going to put a lid on this. And what's going to happen is my tomato juice is going to be... Um, absorbed by the macaroni and I'm telling you it is really really okay I'll say it three times really good so I'm gonna put a lid on this I've got my heat turned down to oh about medium low and I, I'm gonna watch my heat because I don't want this to burn or scorch and I'm gonna give it a stir every now and again and taste it for seasoning and if I need to add more tomato juice I will okay I hope you can see how inexpensive this is and how tasty this is going to be. And trust me, this is, uh, if it's good when you first make it, it's even better when it's left over. Isn't that funny how that works? Okay, I'm going to put a lid on it. We'll be right back. 
All right, now I want you to see, this has been on here now for about, oh, really just a few minutes, maybe three to five minutes, not very long. And I want you to see how this, this is cooking down and it's getting thicker. See how it's getting thicker because that's the starch in the, in the macaroni. And it is getting sauce-like. And the, the macaroni noodles are starting to absorb all those really, really, really good flavors. Okay? Now, I'm going to give it another five minutes. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't go dry. And if I have to add more of the um, tomato juice, I will. Okay? Any tomato juice that you have left, and you may have some left depending on your quantity of goulash, just put it in a covered container, uh, put it in your refrigerator, you can drink it or use it in, in other dishes, or you can freeze this. Okay? Alright, we'll be back. Alright, this is ready to go. Now, I want to show you how good this look, looks. Look how thick and rich that sauce is on there. I'm telling you, this is the way to go. That, um, can of tomato juice, which was only I only used half of it, was about a dollar and forty-nine cents. I think the tomatoes were forty-nine cents a can. My hamburger was on sale for a dollar ninety-nine a pound, and I only used three quarters of a pound. My peppers were three for a dollar something. My celery was so cheap, and my um, Onion was that purple onion that was the last I had. I had a bag of them. I don't know what. Onion, 25 cents. I don't know. You can see how absolutely, totally inexpensive this dish is. Now, <clears throat> let me dish some of this up for you. Now, you know what? When my kids were young, they liked to eat their goulash with bread and butter, and I would always make a bowl of buttered corn. <laughs> and that was our dinner, okay? Now, look at that. Doesn't that really look good? It is good. I'm not kidding you. You have to try it because kids love this stuff. They do. It's absolutely wonderful. Now, while you were away, I did put a little bit of more salt and pepper. I tasted it just to make sure that it was really, really good. So, I know that this is good. Alright? Hey, listen. I hope that you give this a try. If I can do it, you can do it. You know you can. Okay, so get in there, make some family-friendly goulash for your family. They're going to love it, and they're going to love you for it. Easy way to feed a crowd, and I'm not kidding you. Okay, I love you, and you just remember that little is much when God is in it. Okay, all right, talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share because other people need to know this stuff too, you know.